What you're going to see today are a lot of highlights. I mean, there's so much I wanted to show you in that 15 minutes. So what you're going to see today are a lot of highlights that take place in the classroom and how we kind of change the dynamic on education. And everything you see here is for children with disabilities. The Sydney Nurse Center um, caters to students with moderate to severe intellectual and physical disabilities. Um, but it, what you're seeing here actually is not just you know, disability sp specific. What you're really going to see is a change in dynamic between how universities, public schools, and community programs internationally can engage together on equal ground and to move forward the idea of being a global um, education and global um, educator. So can we, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if I can hit play from here. So if you can click the button to. Learning this to play music can be difficult. For students with special needs, it's even more challenging. The tv 20s Christian Giannis is here to tell us one Gainesville teacher who is meeting that challenge has been certified gold by a national organization. Paige, last week, Alachua County teacher Don DeVito got a call from the CEC, or Council for Exceptional Children, saying he had been chosen as their National Teacher of the Year. DeVito attributes the honor to his students and to teachers around the world. The music coming out of this classroom is just as special as the students making it. They have autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. We have students who don't speak. But don't underestimate these artists. Their beats are being heard around the world. I would say we visited about 10 countries so far, and it's growing every day. Music teacher Don DeVito teaches at Sydney Lanier in Gainesville, a public school that serves students with disabilities. His curriculum is almost entirely online. Our students learn world music. They learn to recognize different styles and composers from the source. Every day, DeVito's students interact with musicians from around the world, learning the Jamba Buena from a Kenyan. Jamba! <laughs> I miss you all. Or a Brazilian melody. And DeVito's classmates include a group of visually impaired students from Pakistan. So music uh, gives them hope, uh, uh, courage. A gift that DeVito says costs 30 bucks for the computer camera, but one that keeps on giving. They can accomplish anything that they set their mind to. And when it's adapted, then they have the people to support them. And they have support all over the world now. DeVito says last May his students performed at Carnegie Hall. And with his recognition as the CEC's Teacher of the Year, DeVito will speak before members of Congress, and he's hoping to take his students with him. Kristen Giannis, TV20 News. And we did, and the idea of what you're seeing here is not just Skyping internationally in a cultural lesson, which is a wonderful thing, but we do make that connection and that engagement. Some of the examples you saw there were the Amwali community for adults with disabilities in Beijing. The Special Education Center for Children with Visual Special Needs um, in Pakistan, Gujarat City, um, University of Andrina in Brazil, uh, Group Langi, an ensemble for children who are homeless with disabilities in Guinea, West Africa. The instruments we play on, those marimbas you saw and the djembe's you saw, we purchased with our band budget from the makers of those instruments in Guinea. So it supports rice for them, we get the instruments, and we Skype to them, but because they don't have a computer, what you saw there on the video, by the way, was my classroom video camera, because we wrote a grant for their director who was in the U.S., and he won it. We, won, we nominated him for an award. He won a community music award. He went back to Guinea with the video camera from our classroom and did music performances with the children there. Um, and the video goes on. You can see them eating the rice and all those kinds of things. And then what we did for ISME, which is the International Society for Music Education, uh, this is for 85 countries with thousands of music educators around the world. They don't have the education system to where they're gonna get a degree in either special education or music education in Kanaka, Guinea. So we wrote a little article for them on this, right? Wrote a little article, and it was put in the ISME newsletter. This went to 85 different countries. Because of that, Tasana, who, who runs the ensemble, um, had opportunities to go and be a visiting musician and with the Chicago Arts Orchestra um, in Chicago, came to Carnegie Hall with us to play inclusively with our students, and the United Nations, who was doing a project on music as a natural resource, about how to um, help to end poverty through the arts in very low HDI countries, included Group Langee in the write up. So they're in a United Nations compendium in New York because of the collaboration that we did with our students. So it's the one on one collaboration with our kids 
sharing music with their children, but at the same time, we're networking together and we're collaborating together to bring everybody up together as a group. So um, if we can go to the, and I'll speed up here so I don't go over 15. Oh, no, no, yeah, no next slide. Oh, that's me, isn't it? Sorry. My bad. Okay, so what you're going to see here um, in just a moment is, um, well, let's go ahead and play it and I'll explain it. University of Madrid in Brazil composed original music for our students. The balayo um, is a basket, and the basket is represents something you put in that has value. So they're holding up the names of each of our students as being valuable to them, having value to them, and they put it in the basket, and then our students perform for them. So they composed this song for us. And they're holding up the names of the different students in the class. And sometimes the connection isn't perfect, but it doesn't matter. So they go student to student, and you get the idea. And then Jerry. So we can go ahead and, and can you pause? Or I'll pause. Can we go ahead and stop it there? Um, you didn't. You may not have caught it, but in the back of the room was a gentleman wearing clothes from Guinea, West Africa, traditional clothing. That was Tasana. Um, we actually got the funds to bring Tasana to our classroom for a week for visiting. So not only you know is it on Skype, but we actually got the funds to bring him to our classroom for a week. And now afterwards, he played on the ballophone with our students, the music we learned from Giddy West Africa to the Brazilian educators and music education majors. So, and then when we wanted to go to Carnegie Hall, um, you might have read in the paper recently, our high school band competed in a marching band competition for the first time uh, with PK Young in the same classification, Newberry High School. Um, so much is based on competition in, in education. Um, so what we try to do is focus on the collaboration and uh, so we wanted to go where other people go. We heard that Beholds had gone to Carnegie Hall the year before us. So I said, well, I, I want to take my students to Carnegie Hall. But when you call the travel companies, they all say, and I told them, I have a group of students with disabilities who want to come to your event. And the travel companies run the events at Carnegie Hall, so they make the money off the rooms, right? So I was always like, only put you on hold. And then nobody ever would like come back. You know, I'd take a message, nobody would call me back. So we called them and said, how much is it to rent Carnegie Hall for an evening? And Weill Hall, which is one of the three halls, was $9,000. Our PTA gave us a deposit of about $500, and then we fundraised the rest with community programs. And I said, now what are we going to do for three hours in Carnegie Hall? And all the ensembles that you see here, with the exception of Arthur and Pakistan, we got grants, and they flew to New York and played exclusively with us on stage. Limerick University in Ireland, and they all went and played with us, and we called it Discovering Abilities. Um, Arthur, I met at an ISME conference. He was the only music educator in Pakistan who was like part of ISME. Um, for a variety of reasons, and they flew him to the conference in China, and I met him in the hallway. And afterwards, I said, you know, we need to Skype together. We need to have your students engage at mine. So our students come to school early because his students can't be on the streets after dark, and because of the time differences, it isn't safe for them to be out on the street. So I said, you know what, we should, we should grant write together. So we grant wrote, and we got go talk communication devices. Um, Arthur got all kinds of supplies for his students. I got supplies for my students, because if you're going to write a grant, you write it with two people, and you're including more impact internationally, we're working together. Um, when I got that National Teacher of the Year award, I got to do a lot of keynotes. So I, yes, I did bring my students with me to, to Washington and other places, but at the same time, at the National State Directors of Special Ed, I was the keynote, I brought my students, and we Skyped into Arthur, and Arthur was the keynote with us. So now, on Arthur's resume, he's got keynotes at national events in the United States, and we wrote it up, and we sent it um, to a colleague of mine at the University of London. And they were putting together a book on community music education. And Arthur and I got a chapter in that book. So now Arthur is a published international Arthur. Um, they said, Don, we would really like you because they, by the way, in addition, after that, they decided um, to fund his program with 20,000 British pounds over three years. It's now expanded to 500 children with disabilities in Pakistan, all because two little center schools decided to work together. Um, and since then, they said, Don, we really would like you to, they were having a meeting and they were CCing me on the meeting, and I got to talk faster here, I'm sorry. But they said, um, you know, we'd like to send somebody out there to see how the program is going. And I didn't get asked, I was getting copied on the emails. And then somebody said, what about Don? 
They want someone, because they spent 20,000 British pounds and they want to do further funding, but they want someone to go out there. And apparently nobody at the University of London was keen on going to Pakistan. And I said, um, okay. And then I talked to Arthur and I said, okay, now you got to keep me safe if I go, right? We have to work this out. So Arthur, you know, and, and things literally tend to explode from time to time in his area. So um, he said, okay, well, maybe down the road. And then they said, well, fine, we'll bring Arthur to, Pakistan, to England and we'll give him training. And we'll let him visit special schools in England. And then the next email was, what about Don? And I emailed back, what about Don? <laughs> so, um, so because I agreed to go to Pakistan, they actually flew Arthur and I to England. We got to visit in person again, four years later, special schools together in England. Um, so now we're getting all kinds of training on something called Sounds of Intent, which is for children with disabilities, a framework for, for um, how to recognize overt positive behavioral communication and language communication for children with disabilities. And now they want to come to sit in air because they want to expand it to the U.S. So we're actually going to have the University of Roehampton in London and England in 2015 coming to Lanier to establish that program. All because we Skype and document what we do. So, um, and I'll go quicker here. Just So that's just an example. Um, you can kind of see what the Skyping looks like. We do it on my smart board. So we have a big, large screen. Okay. And they do things like White Cane Safety Day. They do all the special ed, special days that you have internationally. They take part in as well. Um, and that's Arthur in England as a result. And I kind of told you everything you're seeing there. Um, one of the other programs I met when I was there was a gentleman named Gary Day who does a lot of work with iPad for people with disabilities. And um, he began Skyping with our students. And so now we're learning uh, different iPad techniques. And can we click the one on the left real quick just to... And if somebody can let me know when I like have two minutes left, just so three, okay. So he's skyping to us um, traditional Irish music. Okay. So let's play the one on the right now. And that's my students playing with him. And you see the room's filled with all these instruments from all over the world. Okay. Um, and I'll go ahead and move it to the, to the next slide. Um, just very quickly, if you could just play this one. Molly Malone. So they learn traditional music. One of the things you can do in your classroom as well is create learning environments that match a particular country, just as if you were doing a play. So they do that um, in England, and that's Morocco on the right. And on the left, they actually do like space travel. He has all the sound effects in this one room. Then they go in this other room, and they play all these different manipulative games with stones and light, where the student really explores their environment. Um, this is my student, Lena. Um, Lena was born in um, Haiti with hydrocephalus and left in the abandonment ward of the hospital in Passaway where they don't give you food and water. Gertrude on the left rescued Lena um, and brought her to the Notre Dame Orphanage, which is like the only inclusive orphanage in, in Haiti. Um, the children go to school without disabilities, so those with get education at the orphanage. Um, so, I, so what we did was, besides Skyping, um, I went there her adoptive parents, who was brought to the US, had life-saving surgery, and her adoptive parents surprised me at an open house with a plane ticket to Haiti. So I, I went there and started a music education program at the orphanage, and this is one of the children there on the left on this drum. So kind of reconnecting two worlds. So I emailed my colleague in London, and I didn't say, we need money. I said, Can, um, here's what I'm doing in Haiti. What do you think of this? And he emailed me back and said, what's involved? So I didn't ask for the moon. I said, we need a projector so we could do group instruction inclusively. So besides videotaping the students during the day so, that, so they can see themselves on the screen, um, we have Desain, which is like famous Haitian leaders on the screen. The students without disabilities had to give historical information. The ones with used GoTalks, which they gave us money for, to in, programmed in Creole, so they pressed the color of his jacket, pressed the colors that they would identify, which was their particular curriculum. So we had a multi-age inclusive lesson going on academically, where all the students were able to communicate um, together. And um, I'll, I'll go over this one. This is us back at the school. We got drums for them, and we Skyped weekly to Haiti. So they share their culture with us, and so our students engage with them in the orphanage every week. These are the students using the GoTalks. 
the children there without disabilities um, don't have any training to become um, really, I mean, they, they get education, but to be a teacher there, there is no vocational training to be a teacher other than what Projects or Hades offers. So those students, um, these are two of the students with disabilities, but the students there without disabilities were playing teacher. They taught themselves to use the Go Talks and they would go and do it with the students. So actually, by being there and getting this multi-age academic experience, they're actually going to be in a good position to actually be a teacher when they leave there because they'll actually have some skills and knowledge. And the reward for answering the questions correctly was uh, frozen in French. And I'll, uh, just to close, um, we put that table out with a projector for the children, for just the children's disabilities when the others went to school. And the next day we put the table in that same spot and they went nuts. They're not verbal and they went nuts because they remembered from the night before what that meant with that table being in the middle of the room and the projector coming on it. So, um, so that kind of gives you an idea. So, simple steps to imp implement. Same old school, like pen pal. Like we used to do that in the 70s, right, when I was in school. You know, contact a program. But we changed the dynamic then from a university saying, we want to do a study on this, and we're going to have this random sampling of people, to where we engage with universities and say, why don't we try this? And they say, yeah, let's try that. And we'll do it together. And we're connecting um, community programs with public schools, with universities, in a very different dynamic than just this kind of top-down, okay, we're going to study something, and we'll let you know what we're going to study, and then maybe it gets published. And then maybe it gets used, maybe it doesn't. So um, anyway, so that, very quickly, I hope I didn't go too far over, gives you a general idea. But the idea is just make a contact. Email, email a program somewhere, a university, um, a community music program, that kind of thing, or community education. It doesn't have to be music ed, right? I'm music ed. It could be anything. It could be another school in another country. Um, and make those connections. And invite them to Skype with your students. Invite a university professor somewhere in a country you're learning about to Skype with your students. And just watch how it goes from there. Um, so basically, that's, in a nutshell, um, the idea. So, so thank you.